Hey everybody, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. And today we love them. We're talking about the niche slash indie house toka. I don't think they get enough credit for the beautiful fragrances that they release. So since I get asked a lot about them and because they pop up on my favorite lists for spring and summer, I decided to go ahead and give you guys my full collection and my thoughts on each one. Let's go ahead and get this video started by talking about their newest release. That would be Belle. I recently hauled her, so I've talked about her before. This is Italian bergamot, petite grain, and white freesia. It's pretty. It's a very pretty floral fragrance. That petite grain adds a little pungent note to it and when i say pungent i don't mean something that's necessarily bad i just mean it makes it stronger louder more boisterous really pretty totally signature scent worthy totally everyday appropriate especially for work um especially for the spring and the summer this is just so simplistic i know there's more than just the three notes in here but I like the way they describe it because the white freesia to me is really the star. The Italian bergamot works very well with the petite grain to keep this feminine and bright. That white freesia though, it's absolutely gorgeous. And this isn't normally my style. I would consider this to definitely be a more mature fragrance. So I'm thinking you're going to be in your late 30s, 40s and up to really appreciate this. I feel like if I were in my teens or 20s, I would be like, this is too old for me. This next one is a beautiful green, citrus, slightly spicy perfume. This is called Colette. Let me go over the notes. So we have Amalfi lemon, bergamot, juniper berries, mandarin orange, violet, jasmine, pink pepper, and cyclamen. You absolutely get all of those notes at some point in this perfume. But I'm telling you now, the star of this is the use of the citruses with the juniper berries. I used to always attribute juniper berries to masculine fragrances and deodorants and colognes. Juniper berries definitely gives you that green forest type of smell. And while it does peek its head through here, it is calmed down greatly. I mean, substantially by the use of the beautiful Amalfi lemon, the bergamot, the mandarin orange, and then you have the jasmine and the violet in there. Just absolutely beautiful. This is, and then the pink pepper that gives it that little bit of kick. And so you're going to get the citruses, the pink pepper, and it's like a citrus fragrance that also hangs out with a couple of its floral friends. But I'm telling you, this, this was brilliant to put juniper berries in here. I just think the twist that it gives it in that green flair with the citruses is just amazing. The next one that we're going to talk about is my girl, Amelia. Now, Amelia and I had a misunderstanding at first. We almost came to blows. However, I did not let my temperament get the best of me and I gave her a chance to explain herself, okay? Let's go over the notes. Fig leaf, clementine, magnolia, Agathisma, or something, fig, grass, mate, or mate, M-A-T-E, what is happening? Um, amaryllis, iris flower, coconut nectar, ambrex, praline, and Japanese loquat. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you there's a, there's a lot going on in here I've never heard of in my life, and some of it I can't even pronounce. So to get back to the fragrance, though, green. When it gives you that note of grass, it is serious. At first spray, it is opening up, smelling like you are standing outside and maybe just got through cutting your grass. Um, yeah. So I will tell you now that the Um Jardin line from the House of Hermes hipped me to being patient with green fragrances. That opening may be something that smacks you in the face and has you go, why in the world would I want to smell like a forest? But if you just chill for a few, she does come around. The fig usage in here is magnificent. I mean, oh my goodness. So 
It is very strong on the green front and it takes a while before any of the sweetness comes out with the fig leaf, the regular fig, um, the iris flower, the coconut nectar, all of that stuff comes eventually. But you are hit with green, green and clementine, like the best of a citrus and green blend. It really is beautiful. But I'm going to tell you right now, I was not mature enough to handle this the first time I smelled it. I had to sit her down and, and calm down and come back a couple of weeks later and say, okay, let's give this a fair shot. Let's see what it morphs into. Now I love super duper green fragrances in the opening that I know promise to become way more feminine by the mid and the dry down. This is not a safe blind buy. This is actually, I think, the toughest one in terms of blind buying. You have to know that you're okay with the smell of grass if you're going to deal with this. But yes, baby, I wouldn't trade her for the world. She is unique across the board. Even with all the Un Jardin perfumes I have, she smells nothing like them. She does green her way. So I really appreciate Amelia. But again, it's not for the faint at heart. If you are not, you know, the one who wants to smell like grass, even for three or four minutes, Stay away from Amelia. <laughs> oh, but she's such a beautiful girl. The next thing that we're going to talk about is an extreme beauty. She is one of my favorites. This is Guilletta. Let me go over the notes. She's starting out with Granny Smith Apple, Ylang Ylang, Pink Tulip, Lilac, Lily of the Valley, Iris, Rose, Orchid, Musk, Heliotrope, Amber, and Sandalwood. Now, for my floral lovers, how you feeling about them notes? She is so creamy. I mean, and again, not lactonic and milky creamy, smooth, like something that is just so luxurious. It almost like feels like it's going to melt into you in the best way. It is just, she's, she's gorgeous. So that Granny Smith apple baby all day, all day day freaking love this perfume the use of the granny smith apple to blend in with all of those floral notes this guys this is a floral piece of perfection you know i don't like floral fragrances but for all of the florals i just named the granny smith apple just like washes over them and makes them less floral and a little sweeter and a little happier in the sense of they smell a little bit more like fruit. It's like if you took all of the petals from those flowers and put them in some Granny Smith apple water, like something you infused with the water. That's what this is. And the amber and the sandalwood just round it off beautifully. Um, you, you have to like florals for this, but if you're scared of florals, there's also room for you to love this as well. Very pretty. Very beautiful fragrance. Also, I know I haven't been mentioning longevity. I don't have longevity issues at all with the Toka fragrances. Um, these are fragrances that I usually wear to like, well, before COVID. Like I will wear to go and run errands or to go to brunch or to go, you know, to art galleries and things like that. So I was never really um, wearing them to work. So I haven't really tested them on like a 10 hour day. But I will tell you, they make it to the six hour mark for sure. Running errands, being in and out of all of the elements, I've never had an issue not being able to still smell them. Now, because I am who I am, if I decided to wear these to work, I would be taking it with me and topping up at the four to six hour mark anyway, because I do that with 99% of my fragrances. It's not a longevity issue with them. But these aren't for florals, for nice florals and for beautiful citruses. These are beast mode in that realm because we don't expect beast mode out of, you know, fruity florals or um, citruses per se. People do a lot of layering fr with fruity florals and a lot of layering with citruses because of that reason. I've never had that issue here. Simone was originally my favorite from the House of Toka and she still holds a special place in my heart. Her notes give you a little bit of everything that you want. She smells beautiful. Slightly citrus, green with a spicy kick. So her notes are watermelon, apple, lemon, freesia, frangipani, 
Rose, Ylang Ylang, Woody Notes, Musk, and Amber. She's a beauty. She's a beauty. She is the quintessential everyday work appropriate fragrance for spring and summer. I could absolutely wear this every day. It's just one of those fragrances that smells good. And again, this is more of a sophisticated, elegant fragrance. This is definitely you work someplace where your job is important and you probably have to dress up. This is what this is the vibe that Toka gives. You're not getting ratchet from Toka. You're getting classy from Toka, but not pretentious classy, not $400 a bottle Tom Ford Chanel classy, not that stuffiness, but a beautiful greenness or citrus with slightly woody notes. You know, that, that thing that Toka does so well, Simone embodies in a way that none of the other fragrances do. She's my baby. Now, this next one is a sassy little girl. Her name is Liliana and she's a beauty. Let's go over her notes. She has peach, bergamot, neroli, peony, gardenia, lily of the valley, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, and benzoin. <laughs> She's stunning. She's stunning. She's definitely the younger sister of them all. Still very playful. Um, the fruits in this are much more bold. They don't just play a supporting role to the florals or to the woody notes or anything like that. When you smell this, that peach is very interesting. That peach is very interesting because you know that you're smelling peach, but the neroli and the bergamot are so loud that the peach can only give off its sweetness and a little bit of its skin, like that, you know, fuzzy part of it. The gardenia and the lily of the valley blend with that freaking sandalwood so well. The patchouli makes this last longer. I do, this one is one that doesn't, I would probably top up with this one at four hours if I tried to wear this to work. This is definitely one of the lighter ones. Um, but still, I know perfumes that start off really, really strong and don't last four hours. So I'll take this. I can't give a dig to it. She's very interesting though. She, like I said, she's sassy. She's going to give you the fruits. She's going to give you the floral and she's going to kick in with that woody spiciness as well and just tell you to deal with it. Liliana is not one that you can put in a box. You're going to get different versions of her throughout the transitions of the fragrance. That's another thing that Toka does so well. You're not getting linear fragrances with them. You're going to have an experience. You're going to go on a journey. I absolutely adore this house, if you can't tell by now. Absolutely, hands down, my favorite. The show stealer herself. What's her name? Stella. Stella, my baby. Okay, let's go over the notes. Blood orange. Yes, ma'am. When you first open her up, she is going to assault you with one of the most beautiful blood oranges you've ever smelled, that's ever traveled through your nostrils. She is amazing in the opening. Uh -huh. Okay, we're talking bitter orange, watery notes, Lily, freesia, wild orchid, musk, and sandalwood. Listen, this girl makes me happy. This girl is one of the most beautiful and sexy uses of orange I've ever seen. And, and doesn't it sound weird to say that? Like beautiful and sexy orange? What? Yes. Yes. I love her. I used to get on the elevator at work when I would wear this. And every single time, without fail, if I stepped into the elevator with someone who was already in it, they would say, oh my goodness, you smell amazing. You smell wonderful. What are you wearing? Several times I wrote this down to give it to people. Stella, she, ooh, child. But you're also talking to a woman who loves citrus and sandalwood. So if you're iffy on either one of those, this fragrance is not going to be for you. With that being said, guys, that is my complete Toka collection. Go check out my Macari page to see if I have, I think I have a travel size of Liliana left. So yeah, just pretty, pretty florals, pretty citruses, pretty citrus woody combinations. Like there's some stuff that they're doing over there at Toka that I haven't experienced before. And the level of quality that's involved, I appreciate. If you purchase with them for the first time, I believe there's a 20% off coupon. So Go and search up all the notes 
And if there's something that seems like, you know, it's your vibe, make sure you use that coupon. They also, every now and then, I think they have a spring 25% off sale going now. But you know what? I don't know when I'm going to put this video up, so let me be quiet. I do know that they do 25% off sales every now and then. And I also know that, like I said, on your first purchase, you can get 20% off if you sign up for the coupon, probably sign up for the newsletter or something, whatever it is when it first pops onto their page. They're worth trying at least one or having at least one of your collection, in my opinion. And you guys know I'm usually more of a designer girl. So if I am on the bandwagon of a niche or an indie kind of expensive house, they must be really good to me. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to answer any questions you had about the House of Toka. I hope I was able to tell you something that piqued your interest. Of course, let's talk about it in the comments. You know I'm here for you guys. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to my channel, click the like button and select the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. It not only helps my channel to grow, but it lets me know that you want me to keep making this content for you. As always, I want to see you guys in the comments. And until then, bye.